MC Benny. Come on, East Africa. Ha! This a party. Ah. Tell them. Hmm. Africa Mashariki. Kwaja pamoja. From country to country, yeah. We got to work together. We are leaders now. Aiming hard for the better. Together. To make our nations greater. By sharing to the power. So you lead, I lead, we lead together. So you lead, I lead, we lead together. We the lead, we the lead. Let children be a reality. We the lead, we the lead. Let children be a reality. Together we shape with responsibility. As young people with ability, here we are to take the opportunity to raise the flag of East Africa. Together with love, together with peace, together respond to our need. Together transform our community. Has a see light and a bright future. Let's join hands for youth and women. Africa Mashariki yote tu Uganda vijana eh yeah. vijana ha kutoka ah. Kenya Tanzania Uganda Burundi hadi South Sudan na Rwanda kwaje pamoja ili fanye nini vijana wote aha What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Nice to have you all. My name is Franklin Mireri, and uh, <laughs> we are here with our host. Kazeneza, uh, wanna say hi? Hi, everyone. Franklin, where are you getting that energy seven? <laughs> you have to have energy. And when the whole of Africa is coming together from Moses, Akuna, we can see you where you are with your wonderful tips. Yeah, nice to see you. Uh, if you can turn on your video at least for a few seconds, we want to know where you're joining in from. So we're going to just say hi. Greetings are going to come in from all over the continent. Amelia, want to say hi and where you're joining us from? <laughs> Amelia, you're muted. Hi, everyone. I hope that you are doing well, all of you. Akram, Hano. Hi. We are hi. doing great. I'm glad. It's really so nice to have you today. So yes. So, where are you joining us from? Akram, where are you joining us from? Yeah, I'm from Sudan. Atakata Ndoko Ndogo. Sudan, thank you. Yeah. Amwil, we hear you telling people you want to Katakata Ndoko Ndogo. Share some of that. Mawidio. Translate it as well. Katakata Ndoko Ndogo. That is asking is someone to week. make the dog. <laughs> hi, hi, how are you? My name is Samuel Sukuli. Uh -huh. uh, I'm just from uh, uh, work. I'm driving uh, my way to home. So I just bought some, some meat. That's why I said my katakata and dogo dogo. People yes. know how to have fun. Eh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And whoever who said this meeting at uh, this time, you must yeah. have really I thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in Nairobi. That's Someone's great. In Nairobi. Delta, so I want to say you. hi. You tell us where you're tuning in from. Then we go to Neema. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi. So Delta, so where are you tuning in from? Tanzania. Awesome. I'm, I'm in the rest now. Dar es Salaam, great, yeah. great. Deltas from Dar es Salaam. Probably you could send us some heat, some sunshine from Dar es Salaam. <laughs> That's Holy. very true. <laughs> yeah. Neema Mtenga, where are you tuning in from? Hello. Hi. Oh. Yeah, I'm Neema Mtenga from Tanzania, but currently in German born. Currently in? German born. Oh, German born, Tanzania. Uh, 
Uh, so where are you tuning in from right now? Bon. Oh, Bon. Germany, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, we have the Bonn. diaspora today. <laughs> so you're in Germany. Ah, right? yesterday, yesterday, Germany was served by your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. So let us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because we only have one hour and we have five minutes left, we want to hear from all of you. Uh, we want to check on one more person who has a good hand. Moses Akuma. You want to say hi and tell us where you're tuning in from, and then we we'll hand it over to Beatrice and Jennifer. Moses Akuma, if you can unmute and tell us who you're coming in. Yes. Hello, everyone. Oh. Hi. Hi. I'm Moses Akuma Odims from west of the Nile in Uganda. Wow. This is so nice to have you. With my little girl, with my little girl Ruth, uh, a P7 Vakis who is at home. <laughs> Nice of you, Mr. Chibu. How are you? <laughs> great, great. Uganda, we have people from Dar es Salaam, we have people from Bonn, we have people from all over the globe, literally. So as other people are joining Nairobi, in, Nairobi. So other, when other people are joining in, don't worry, we want to hear from everyone. Uh, but most spe especially tonight is called Peace Night. We're going to speak about peace for the next 50 minutes, but not just speak. We're also going to have some trivia questions, That just three of them. So get ready for them. Uh, I also see <clears throat> Ivan. <laughs> I see Apollo, Timugaya. Apollo, you want to tell me COVID? Hey, yes. hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apollo. You COVID, Apple, Apple facing the election challenges. <laughs> Apple, we need to see our candidates. We need to see our candidates. We need to see our candidates. <laughs> Apple, how are you? I am fine, thank you so much. Hey, Apple, uh, that mask, why is it yellow? Oh, I am. Why is that mask yellow? The yellow. mask is yellow. It's NRM. Oh my God! It's yellow. Ah, uh, that is playing campus in Kenya, one. <laughs> okay. Oh my God! Nice to see you, Apollo. Uh, hello, hello. So uh, Amelia is raising the hand. Amelia, yes, we missed hearing your voice. Amelia, say hi. Yes, we needed to hear from where, where she is. Amelia, you are muted and mute. Hi, I'm from Liberia, Emilia Patrick. Oh, that's very nice. You are in Liberia? Yes. Oh, that's really great. I see people from Zambia, from Ghana. This is really, really nice. It's so an exciting <laughs> evening. And I was going to tell Franklin that it's not always that we go into meetings and we have fun, we laugh. So this is really nice that we just chatting and have a laugh together to see africa together laughing together not just talking about big things but be able to have fun a session of something important but in a fun way so i think yeah. this is also relaxing uh, in nairobi we are at seven i'm sure even in uganda but people in accra might be maybe around five or, or four. I am not sure. Um, I am I'm, I'm, I'm sure many, we, we have different timings, <laughs> but it's yep. so nice. I see people, uh, Hassan, Hassan, which, which country are you? Yes, and I, I, my name is Hassan. I am from Yemen. I am in Yemen currently in Sana, the capital. <laughs> Serious? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, a few years ago, I participated in a, a training course in Arusha, Tanzania. And, ah. Uh, uh, what is it? What, what you call it? Uh, MSTC. Uh, yes. Exactly. Yes, yeah, MSTC. It, it, it was on uh, conflict management and conflict resolution. It was very useful. I, I, I applied what I le le learned here in Yemen. We are in a conflict zone, as you know. Wow. So, 
Uh, we are doing well. Sana is uh, a bit quiet and peaceful. Uh, and uh, just pray for Yemen, please. Everybody yes. in Africa. Yes. Oh, no, it's, oh, this oh, is. Oh, brother and sister here uh, in Africa, please uh, uh, just remember us. This is really, really exciting. I'm, 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 I'm beyond words. Uh, I thought today we have Africans, but I didn't expect to have a Yemenese. Look, I, I consider, I consider myself. I feel, I feel, and not only me. Many Yemenis, the majority of Yemenis, we feel, we feel like we are African more than Arabs. Wow. Okay. That's that's yeah, because fun. because in the view in the view what's happening now, the Yemen is, is being distracted and, and destroyed by Arabs. So we are more African than Arabs. Oh wow. In the in in the field of uh, soccer, we we do have uh, many Africans playing for German. So you are very right when you say ah. you are so Africa. <laughs> yeah, Africa. Yeah. I think today. Today, German is being attacked in this meeting, so... No, 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 no. We are welcoming in style. He's, he's, he's feeling at home. Yes. Actually, actually, there, there is a diaspora from Yemen all around Africa, from, from oh. East Africa to, to Ethiopia to, to Tanzania, Kenya, everywhere you, you find Yemen. Mm. Since it's long away, I mean, since centuries, they are there. Okay. That's really, really great to yeah. hear. So, uh, uh, frankly, also uh, while 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 I was there in that in that training course in Arusha, I also visited Nairobi, uh, Dar es Salaam, uh, Zanzibar, all that that was good city. I, I enjoyed it. It was wonderful. Okay. Thank wow. You, thank you so much, Hassan. Uh, we really appreciate. Uh, Samuel, you have not yet found the meat. Eh? I see you are still looking for meat. Eh? I don't know. I, I, I'm okay. I'm okay. In fact, okay. I, I've got them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank okay. You. Up to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank so, thank ladies you. and gentlemen, we will cont uh, before we hand it uh, to Kazeneza, uh, who is my co-host, our co-host for today, allow us to just go to a small quiz. It will be for exactly five minutes, and then okay. we we'll hand it over to Kazeneza, who will introduce a wonderful. Uh, panel of guests who will be taking us through this uh, for the next 40 minutes. So if you must Google, Google within the next uh, one minute, because the questions are going to be coming in thick and fast, and we need you to be active. We need you to be ready for them. So it's going to be a trivia session. As you may all be aware, tonight we are talking peace. We are talking peace. So get ready for the questions. And here they come. So number one. Number one. First question coming up right now. Just a moment. Okay. Aha. So the first question. When was the United Nations Security Council Re Resolution 2250 unanimously adopted? So if you know the question, if you know the answer, just drop the answer on the chat. And the first person to drop the correct answer, we will acknowledge you widely. So Kazeneza and all of you, let's see who is the first one to answer that question. When was the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2250 unanimously adopted. Franklin, I would urge to, to put date, like yes. a day, yes. month, and year. Mm. Oh, oh, people are already answering. Oh, Anim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anim has put, uh -huh, Sheila, Sheila Mugabo. Yes. I, I think Mugabu. I know him, Sheila Mugabo. Sheila Mugabo, you got it right. Uh, yes. Umar, Selangat, you're coming in. Chelengat, you got it right. Delvis, you got it right. Yeah. But Anim got the year right first. Eh? Sheila Mugabo, Anim got the coming. year first. Yes. Next question. Next question. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Next question. Of course, that's the answer, December 9, 2015. Which African football star has recently donated money for a hospital to be built in his home country? 
That's the question. And the hint is you'll never walk alone. Ahal. Let's see who is the first one. Answers are not yet. Oh, said your money. Said your money. Shaila, Shaila got it first. I found one for that. <laughs> Shaila, you got it first. Shaila, I wonder how you're making this happen. Mm. Final question. Shaila Final. is representing Burundi well, Franklin, by the way. Uh -huh. Last question. What is the most viewed African song on YouTube? And the hint, it has to do with magic. <laughs> uh huh. What is the most viewed African song on YouTube? Mm -hmm. and yours is. <laughs> oh, someone saying magic. So, what's the song? Have you seen Ivan Ans? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Susanna. Okay. Susanna. Queen Evans, what's magic? Uh, so you people are not following music. Oh, 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 oh. See, we have an old audience. Are we, are we, sure we have young people. Yes, magic in there. Delvis has got it. Delvis and Jue. Delvis. Hatona uh, Matata. Delvis Njue has got it. Delvis Njue. So Shaila and Delvis, you are our winners for today. And if yes. you can speak, we are going to invite you to say something, especially Shaila. Shaila, if you can speak, just tell us where you're from. Uh, how come you're so brilliant? You got the first two questions right, of course, with Anim. But Shaila got the first two questions in detail. Shaila, you want to say hello to us? And yeah, hello. Yeah, hello, uh, ev hello everyone. Uh, my name is Schiller, actually Mugabe. That's how it's pronounced. I'm from uh -huh. Burundi, uh, living in Germany, and uh, yeah, I'm glad to be here. And uh, how I got the <laughs> the questions? Uh, the second one was easy because I'm a soccer fan, so uh -huh. I might follow. The first one I just knew the year, but not sure about the the date. But it's also what we call in French, I would say, uh, culture générale. Like we yeah. we like to yeah. Franklin, I'm sure you understood, yeah. I only had the general. Shela, uh, Shela Magoba. I think okay. I know this guy. Yeah, actually, yeah, from yeah, we Zain, Zain, Zain. Yeah? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah I remember ah, you, hey. you wow. mean it's a meeting here. They, they can hey. thank you for, for organizing wow. this meetup. Okay, really, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So let us allow also the one, uh, the, the, who was the other person who got the let final question? Let me tell you, the second one was, by the way, people are still writing for by Davido Yerusalem. Uh, ah. <laughs> so let I, me, I it was... Anim uh, also, my, got, uh, hey, Anim right. also Anim. Got, got the year first. Anim, you Anim, say do hi you want to us. say hi? And tell us where you're joining in from, if you can. We'd appreciate. Uh, I, mean, no, I think I'm good. I'm going to go to the ones who got two questions right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm well, joining in from Juba. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I'm nice. him, so, sorry, my internet is bad, so I can't see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm joining in from Juba. It's a, it's a good. This is my first time actually to join this. Uh, what is it? The this type of the unplugged series. The unplugged series. Yeah, welcome Anim. So every Thursday we'll be getting free sharing here for one hour. So this is the place to be every Thursday. So thank you for coming in. Let me hand it over to Kazeneza to introduce our guests. Yes, so thank you very much, Franklin. And thank you very much to everyone who is here. I'm so excited. I see numbers keep increasing. We are reaching maybe in one second or 260. We are 59. Uh, now I'm so happy, uh, as I said, uh, today I thought we were just Africans from in the continent, but I see we have Africans from diaspora and, and Africans by, how, how can I say that? Transitivity in French, we would say transitivity <laughs> from Yemen. So it's, it's really nice. Uh, I'm really happy with our guest, um, you people will excuse us because today is a, a women 
night we have our guests are all women i'm sure men <laughs> we, we forgive us today i have three guests uh, and three beautiful and awesome women so we have uh debbie karemera from rwanda debbie hi Um, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Um, Kazeneza, thank you for the introduction. My name is Debbie. Um, my name is uh, Debbie Karimera and I work at Never Again Rwanda. And we'll get to hear more about the work that I do at Never Again Rwanda. But it's a pleasure to be here on this forum. Thank you, Kazeneza. Thank you very much, uh, Debbie. Uh, Debbie, I, I need to thank Debbie because I know she was running home. There is curfew in Kigali to be here at this time, and you are from Kigali. It's it's really an honor for us. So uh, we have a second guest, uh, Anne. Anne Hoz. I, I'm so happy to introduce Anne Hoz as Anne Hoz because my mother's name is Hoz. So Anne, are you here? <laughs> I'm here, Kazi. How are you? Yes, I'm good. Can you introduce yourself? Thank you. My name is Anne Rose, but Kazi is saying Anne Rose because of the French pronunciation, <laughs> but otherwise I'm known as Anne Maua. And yes, I work for Zalendo Africa Initiative in Kenya, here in Mombasa, and I'm pretty much excited to join Africans in the diaspora, Africans in Africa tonight, and just to talk about the peace agenda. Um, yeah, we will know more on what I am doing when, when we get to the presentation. Thank you so much, Kazeneza. Thank you very much, Anne. It's also, I have to thank Anne because I know all my speakers is really a big sacrifice to be at this time. I had to block Anne in the office before she goes home. Um, we have a third speaker, Jetrid Asibazuyo from Uganda. Jetrid, also another one in lockdown. So. <laughs> All right, thank That's you so it. much, Kazeneza. Uh, thank you. You really pronounced my name so nice, Asiba Zuyo. Yes, uh, this is me, Gertrude from Uganda, and uh, I'm so grateful uh, to be in this platform and talking about peace. Uh, I work with Recreation for Development and Peace, so call it RDP Uganda. It's a youth organization, and so I'm grateful to be here and waiting for my time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, my dear uh, guest. Um, as I said, um, I think I will start with Anne because Anne, can you guys hear me? My connection has started playing games. Yes, we hear you. Okay, that's great. We can so, hear you. Will, yes, thank you very much. I will start with Anne. Um, Anne, um, I, I don't think I know you in any particular uh, other field than uh, peace. Everything I know about Anne is just connected to peace. Uh, and I always ask myself, how can a young person like Anne living in Mombasa can just dedicate her life to peace? There is a lot of nice things to live in Mombasa, a lot of nice field. Anne is a communication officer, by the way. She could be working in television and what, but her passion just kept her in peace and security. And I just want to know what, what is driving you to be in this field? Thank you so much, Kaze, for, for that flowery, uh, you know, explanation, like my name and myself. Oh, and it's, it's good that I'm also wearing a flower. Uh, by the way, yes, uh, I need to say Anne Maua means Anne Rose, Anne Flower. So it's <laughs> to give the whole explanation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Kaze. And actually, what, what really drives me, and you're right, I'm supposed to be in a newsroom. In my other life, I used to host a reggae show in school. And so potentially, I could be somewhere either hosting uh, a reggae show or somewhere else doing other things, but I choose peace any day. And for me, what drives me really is the need to really transform uh, the thinking around how people look at young people, especially when we talk about violence. Because for the longest time in Kenya, and I believe uh, 
some bits of the Igad region, or even Sub-Saharan Africa in general. When you talk about young people, you don't miss a line of violence. If it's in election, if it's everything, it's always being blamed in us. But the truth of the matter is young people have never been homogeneous. So how, why, why is it that everybody must include us and associate us with you know, the negative bit of it? So for me, that is what drives me. And to see that young people are really represented with, within the decisions that affect us directly like those spaces for peace building and for violent extremism and for decision making in general because then we, we are the majority we are up 75 percent in kenya right now and so that means a lot it means you're the biggest stakeholder and so we cannot be ignored and i think i will only stop getting passionate about peace that time when people will begin to look at young people as partners in the peace and security work or otherwise yps thank you kaze Thank you very, very much, um, yeah. uh, Anne. I will, I will just continue another question on, on, on the same. Uh, you are not just a young person, but you are a young woman. Um, how, how does it uh, for you, uh, the work in peace building as a young woman? Is it, is it a, a, a normal, like you would be doing it as, as, as a, a male, or, but oh, is there is any extra effort you have to do as, as a young woman in, in your field? Thank you once again, Kaze. And just picking up from the last bit of your sentence that when you're a woman, you have to work twice as hard because there, there are issues of doubt where people feel like, and it's, it's all attributed to the social constructs that we've put around careers and how you know we were brought up that certain careers belong to different people. And so when you're talking about peace and security and you're a woman, of course, there are people who will always doubt, are you sure you're going to do the work? And I think at some point in my life, I used to be a member of, uh, a youth assembly and I was the cabinet secretary for security and for me what that meant then it meant I really had to you know work twice as hard to make sure we are having more young women within the, 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 the local structures of you know peace building in the in the counties but then also it also meant that I really had to you know push the push the, the peace agenda in, in, in certain type of way. And always, most of the times I found myself in positions where I have to make someone believe that yes, I can do this, but I am glad I left quite a good legacy. And there was a time where we, when I just uh, got appointed as the CES for security, we had gone to visit the county commissioner of Mombasa. And the first statement that he then said was, this lady is so beautiful, why did you give her minister for tourism? And you know, I was just standing there wondering now what, what is this supposed to mean? So, so yeah, it, it, I think it's just, we need just to debunk the perceptions formed around uh, mm -hmm. these careers because what men can do, we can equally do that. And, and I'm a living proof that it is possible for young women to involve in peace and security. If anything, when you're talking about violence, violence affects women disproportionately disproportionately compared to the men. So it means we must be at the heart of the business. We must be at the heart of all this negotiation. We cannot afford to sit pretty and keep saying that, oh, you know, well, you know, women are caregivers, women are all these nice flowery things. It is true, we are that, but we are much more than that. And yes, it, it, it's quite important, actually, to be part of all these processes, whether locally or, locally or regionally or globally, even if it means picking those global issues and translating them to local interventions, then for the other young women to be, young women to be able to follow, even if it means supporting a sister from behind, you know, by just building the capacities where you see the gaps, yeah. Yes, I, I actually, Anne, I, I just remembered something connected to your work. Because I know you are very passionate with uh, countering uh, violent extremism. And, and in that side, many times people are just talking about the men who get radicalized, the men who come and bomb, and forget the women who support it also in that, in that side. So I just want to hear from you how, how has been your work in, in the side of, of CVE, how do you, uh, what do you do from, from your organization in countering extremism, um, uh, violent extremism? And also how do you help young women who can be also radicalized because it's not just men who, who are radicalized. Thank you so much, Kaze. It is true that 
in fact, right now the market is more for the younger women than than actually the men. Eh? And now with the, with, with the coming of COVID nineteen, the internet actually has accelerated the number of of people being you know radicalized day in day day out. And for me, part of the work that I've really done is 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 assisting the young women on how they can prevent themselves uh, from a behavioral or perspective on how they can stop themselves from being radicalized, but also working with them in terms of, uh, of, of how the internet is so polarized and it's an avenue for recruitment. So equipping them with tools such as flagging off extremist content, equipping them with tools such as debunking, you know, mis and disinformation about uh, countering violent extremism or other ways which you call counter narratives. Also part of my work includes really training young women on tech assisted violence against women which is otherwise known as Taval, because you see radicalization, and I know this is a bit traditional, I'm glad uh, Professor Trufena is on the call, because part of the work that I have done, I have done it together with her. And, and it, it, it's also included some of the pull and push factors, and some of these factors actually are, are, are things like when you say babuli, the end you know, you would like to be, you know, there's this group that, that has some kind of mercy that has, you know, that you connect with them, it could be lack of an identity. And most of the times when we talk about factors, people talk, talk about lack of identity thinking it's, can, it's physical. It is also online because you are also digital citizens within, within, the, within the, the internet. But Kazen is a part of the other thing that uh, we started doing uh, early this year is also localization of YPS, which is resolution 2250, and localization of 1325. So then that meant that we, we walk on a journey and uh, we started with a high high level meeting, uh, uh, which we called, we called uh, intercontinents, where we had people from Asia Pacific, we had West Africa, East Africa coming together. And we just wanted to make a comparative analysis to learn on the trends and see are there best practices, practices that are done somewhere else Else, that we could actually borrow, borrow to our local context. And it was actually that meeting that, you know, uh, transition into now what you call a national meeting. And we had people uh, participating and we were actually hosted by one person who is on the call called Harun Mwadena from the Global Peace Champion. And we were looking at really, this is what is written on, on, on the UN Security Council um, and Security uh, Resolutions. But what does that mean on the ground? I mean, Kenyans know that we like saying for ground things are different, but yeah. What does that mean? Does it speak really to the needs of these young women? And how do we connect you know, local interventions to the global resolution so that we all participate and contribute to it? And then, so we, we had a high level meeting, now a physical meeting after that, where we're calling it Women Leading Peace. You know, just trying to unpack the nexus between resolutions 1325 and 2250, just to try and see how how that how that was you know to the local women, and so we had invited um, and the kind of mentorship that we were looking for was really like a top top tier three level mentorship because you know there are people like me who are young people but have been in the space for quite some time, but there are those who are upcoming who maybe are one year two years old, but then we have the the established people who you know have been in the space for the last twenty years plus plus so it was quite a good gathering and we we were really looking at what it meant and we were privileged to also have people within the local security structures for 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 those who are not Kenyan we have local peace security structures like the community policy Nyumbakumi and then we also have the district peace committees and we were unpacking what really it meant for those younger women to be in those spaces especially on uh, on, on on places of power places of 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 influence because a district peace committee may be a local law level but those district committees are very powerful since they're the ones who feed the information you know to the national structure to the early warning structures and and, and all these things and mm -hmm. so we unpacked, we unpacked quite some really uh, really good findings even in terms of the prevention pillar of the 2250 which now talks about violent extremism we were able to know for example the grouping have now changed and initially people used to think that you know, the groups for radicalization are mostly on Facebook, but we realize they're also on Instagram, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and the millennials are the kind, are the ones that are, are, are actually worsely hit right now. And this is also in connection with the program I was running with the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, where I also realized that um, the group that we're talking about is 12, and in Mombasa, is 
you know, Kenyans are the best on Twitter, but in Mombasa, really, it's it's more of um, a lot of young people are on Instagram and others on, are on Twitter. So for me, it was an interesting conversation where we developed uh, a position paper on the status of the implementation of both 2250 and 1325, because then we we're looking at how do we submit this resolution and these findings, you know, to the relevant people. And we were able to submit uh, that position paper to the Kenya National Action Plan Secretariat. And then because of those findings and now... Sorry, am I? Oh my God, my time is I'm sorry, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm so happy. I just want to to tell people that you are so passionate. I I, I think I, I don't need to explain to anyone after seeing you talking like that. It's, it's just so nice to see how passionate are you. Yeah. Uh, oh. just um, I know your time is running out. Uh, but yeah. I want, I don't want you to go without telling us about something and then I can release you. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I hope Franklin will give me just 30 seconds to, to let you speak. Uh, as, as you lead, we are, we are honored to have Anne among our alumni of you lead, but now she's even becoming something bigger. Uh, uh, we have uh, something called East Africa Youth Peace Network, which we have created from, uh, I think it was May, yes. And that, then now we are going to launch it uh, next week. Anne has been elected as the uh, chairperson, chairwoman of the steering committee of the East Africa Youth Peace Network. I want to let her talk a little bit about it and invite you all of you guys for the launch next week and then we can release her just uh use one minute Kaze, you know in my other life i think i would have been a politician so i don't know that <laughs> <laughs> i hope <laughs> i hope i hope i can i hope i can use the one minute yes thank you so much Kaze, for giving me the opportunity to 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 oh no is it officially no to <laughs> To tell yes. people about, you know, to, to tell people about the East African Youth Peace and Security Network that we just established. I know this is behind the curtains because we've not officially launched, but otherwise it's good because we're getting first-hand information. So yes, I I got elected uh, uh, as the chair, I mean, the chairperson. So because I'm still getting used to Madam Chair. <laughs> yes, and 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 yeah, we, we the you lead, uh, the U lead uh, team together with the U lead alumni um, took serious some of the findings that really came out during the the the, the peace. Uh, the peace convening that we had and one of the outcomes really was to have an east african uh, network where young people could discuss issues of, of peace and security within the east african region and so the network is is now established and we are going to launch it on the 29th and it has a representation of all the east african countries and we are looking at how we can actually meaningfully engage young people on youth peace and security and so i take this opportunity to invite you all to the launch which is going to be on 29th, uh, 29th of June at 3 p.m. EAT. I know it's going to be, because it's going to be 2, 2, 2 p.m. For, for people from where? From Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan. Yes, 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 you had Kazi. So we hope to see all of you there. Please come, 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 come with an open mind, come with a, a smile, come with a lot of love because this is our network. And because peace and security is a collective responsibility, really, it's our time to actually push it and, and, and you know, be part of the process, you know, from, from the co-creation stage and all, all the way up. And thank you so much for all the accolades that I am seeing here. I see a lot of, of you know, comments on what people are saying, but thank you so much, Kaze, for giving me the opportunity. Someone just typed that they wanted to see the, uh, the position paper. I will share it with Kazeneza and the Yuli team and because they have all your emails that will share to thank you so much, Animu, Animu from the International Visitors Leadership Program for your support and all the other people who are on this call. But Kaze, even as I leave, allow me to thank a cohort of Uzalendo. We have a program called Uzalendo Daima Fellowship where it it's an incubation hub where we, we want the millennials to learn about the, their roles in elections and democracy. And so some of those uh, 
some of those fellows who have not yet started the fellowship actually came to this call. And so I'm pretty much excited uh, to have all of them. Congratulations once again. Thank you so much. God bless you, East Africa. God bless you all. Goodbye, Kwaheri. Au revoir. Thank hold you. Hold on, hold on, Anne. Anne, hold on. You can't leave us like that. <laughs> I wanted to interject and just ask you something. You mentioned that there's a professor on this call, right? Yes, Professor Trufena. Yeah. A professor on our on Uli Plugged. May we allow her just to say hi? We cannot <laughs> allow a professor. Yeah, from say, Australia. If you can just say hi and tell us where you're tuning in from, Professor Trufena Mukuna. I hope we are not putting you on the spotlight. Yes, Professor. Tufena, kindly just say hi, you can unmute yourself uh, and then just greet the young people of Africa. Tufena. Hello, people, young people of Africa. I am your supporter. I work with youth. And as uh, Anna said, I'm also equally very compassionate about the issues of youth. I have I've been doing several projects which have been leading into the other. I started with the issue of youth unemployment. Then we moved on to the violent extremism. Now we are working on COVID and how it affects the youth. I will talk about this more with, uh, as we move along because I am your supporter and I'm interested in hearing the voices of the youth. I like working with youth and meaningfully engaging them, not only to participate or to be part of the team, but I would like to take in what they are saying and implement, and then amplify their voices at the decision-making table, because I, I am lucky to have that space to speak to policymakers who, who can uh, listen and then maybe take me seriously and see how passionate I am about the youth. Thank, Thank you, you for giving Fena. me the opportunity to say hi. So, Prof, where are you tuning in from? I'm in Ethiopia. I deserve by Ethiopia. Wow. You've yes. just finished elections. Yes, peaceful elections. Great, great. Thank you, Prof, for making time for the Ulid and Plug series. So every Thursday, this is the place to be. So we are doing another room check quickly before we let Anne go. Uh, we see Zena. You know, you can't come to the Unplugged session and you leave without being spotlighted. So Zena Abdul, we see you. Uh, just say hi. Where are you tuning? Hey, Zena's <laughs> switched off the, <laughs> the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to another person. Oh, by the way. Oh, we see Makena Mobobia. Hmm. Makena, hey, today we have an intergenerational dialogue. <laughs> Makena, not to put you on the spot, just say hi and where you're tuning in from. And uh, a special lady indeed. We, If Makena, you can hear us. Uh, sorry for putting you on the spot, Makena. Franklin, I'll get you for that. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Um, my, my name is Makena. I work with the young people. I love the young people passionate about young people. I work with uh, Frank and the team at MSTCDC. And so I'm one of your champions and peace, peace, peace. And let me say that young people, leadership is yours yesterday. Amazing. Thank you, uh, Thank, thank you, Mark you very much. <laughs> thank you so uh, much, Makena. So that you just know, uh, to buttress Anne's point, Makena Mobobia is MSTCDC's executive director. So yes, women are in leadership places all over the world and we really appreciate. We are going to do another room check. Uh, uh, Anne, if you're with us, probably, uh, could we allow you to say uh, your bye-bye? Well, you, you know, if you don't allow me to go, we sleep in the office today. <laughs> oh, sorry, Anne. Uh, let us allow you to go, but uh, after bye-bye. Okay. As McKenna left. <laughs> <laughs> She will doing? come back. <laughs> she's still here. Can, ma, she's still there. Yes. yes uh, uh, just before she leaves, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, there is an institute in Ethiopia <laughs> that is uh, collaborating with the uh, East Africa community. They are doing uh, the uh, peace, and, peace and security, managing peace and conflict management in East Africa community. I wanted mm -hmm. to, to know if she's familiar with it. There's something uh, I'm doing a research on it. 
Mm. And I just want, uh, it's a coincidence that uh, McKenna is here. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I think that so. was to Dr. Trufena, maybe. Eh, okay. She's the one who is in Ethiopia. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Is Trufena around or she left? Oh, my. Is, I don't know. She's, I am around. She's still oh. here. I'm around. Oh, but thank you. Thank Samuel, you. Now you just, you know, on Zoom, you can yes. inbox someone directly. And we have allowed yes. you the liberty. So just do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you, thank uh, you thank But you I'm so just doing this uh, as part of interaction, and maybe yes. we can ask anything. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So let us allow yes. Anne to say bye, and then we continue with our wonderful guests. OK. Anne, you're muted, I think. Yes. Yes, go on, just, just to say bye-bye. <laughs> what should I say? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, bye, family. It's always amazing to meet East Africans, and maybe what I didn't say is I'm very radically Pan African. So let us push Agenda 2063 to the next level. We are the people, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. And I would like to leave you with this quote that says, uh, One day Africa will write their story, and this will be a story of dignity and honor from my favorite Patrice Lumumba of DRC Congo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I wish you to reach home safely. Uh -huh. Now, Franklin, are you allowing me to introduce my next uh, speakers? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, let me check in if they are still here. Debbie, hi. Hi, Kaze. Oh, uh -huh. Gertrude, hi. Hi. Oh, okay. I still have all of them here. So thank you very much, um, Debbie and uh, Gertrude, for um, being here again. I, I just want to say something uh, funny about Debbie. Um, Debbie, I met Debbie, it was 2018 or 20 what? 2019, yeah. I think. 2019, yeah. Yes, uh, we met in Nairobi for the first women um uh forum mediation, it was forum. forum mediation yeah. forum so yeah. i know debbie from there and yesterday uh it was a very nice surprise i posted our our poster about today and somebody sent me say the beautiful and smart lady from never again oh, Rwanda. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I said this one. I'm going to keep it and 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 tell uh, Debbie in the in the meeting. So <laughs> that was the beautiful and smart lady from Never Again Rwanda. So thank you, Kazi. Uh huh. Now, without um, making many other jokes, uh, I want uh, you to introduce what you do um, in a Never Again Rwanda. Uh, tell us the work you do, you personally uh, and the whole organization of Never Again Rwanda, it has a big reputation. So yes. maybe to, to, to ask you to try to, to summarize to a little summarize. bit. Yeah, yes, sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kaze. Maybe before I go, um, I introduce the work that I do at Never Again Rwanda, uh, specifically within the peace building um, organization. Uh, or pillar, I would like to give a shout out to two people who I saw who are on the call. Um, there's Felix Kipto, who mentioned that I met Kaze because of the of, of him. Kaze. Actually, yes, that's Kaze. true. Yeah. And yeah, his organization. So, exactly. So we are really grateful for that. As we said, it, it, peace, peace is all about like building these networks. And then there's also someone else called Bakar from Zanzibar. He was one of the alumni for one of the programs that I'll get to talk about in my brief introduction. So I'm really glad to see that, you know, our network is growing. So without taking too much time, I know we don't have so much time on this call. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Kaze and, and Franklin um, for organizing this and the rest of the team at MSTD as well as you lead. Um, you know, this is usually a very great opportunity for us to talk about the work that we do, but to also share our experiences. So I work at Never Again Rwanda, and my specific role is I'm the peace building team leader. So at Never Again Rwanda, we have very different programs that vary, but um, today I'm specifically going to talk about peace building. So within the peace building pillar, we have one of our components that's specifically tailored to youth, which is our peace building institute. So we organize, it's a biannual program that we organize twice a year. 
and it brings together Rwandan, regional, international um, university students and young professionals from different parts across, um, from different diverse backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So what we do when we bring them, because I think you all know Rwanda is one of the countries that would like to say, I usually like talking about Rwanda's experience because it's what I've done most for the past seven years now. Um, we consider Rwanda as a, as, a, as, a, as a good model for peace building because Rwanda is one of the countries that had a, a dark history 27 years ago, specifically the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. So when we started this uh, biannual peace building institute, we wanted to see how best we can involve the young people in not only peace uh, processes, but the decision making process in order for them to be able to know that, you know, at the end of the day, it's not only about policy makers, but young people also have to have a voice and they also have to actively be involved in this peace process given the fact that you know they were manipulated into committing um, crimes against humanity then so the work that we do is basically we like we like to call it capacity building and networking because at the end of the day it's not just about us giving knowledge but it's also about ensuring that those who attend the program are able to also learn from each other so um, what we do we bring these um, young professionals and university students to Rwanda and then we get to take them through different series of um, like what Rwanda went through like our history and then we kind of like take them through now how Rwanda was able to transit to transition into a peaceful process and this is basically through taking them through some of the justice um, mechanism because you know peace cannot prevail if justice has not been served so that's also what we do and then at the end of the day we also then um, get to talk about now how can young people be involved in peace processes so for those who um, attended the peace building institute felix and and Bakar, you guys know that one of the things that we do is we get them to to talk about some of the existing conflicts uh, either around uh, Africa, mostly we try to restrict them to Africa because we tend to have similar problems, similar challenges, similar issues. And then at the end of the day, we get to see how can then we collectively as young people be able to come up with solution to address some of these issues. In addition to that, um, we at Never Again Rwanda, we also believe a lot in um, partnerships. So we have a lot of partnerships because, you know, at the end of the day, peace work cannot be done in isolation. I mean, I'm, I'm rightly put it like there's so many um, there's so many resolutions out there. There's a 2250, there's a 1325 that speaks about involvement of women. So you can't do all this peace work in isolation. You have to do it in collaboration because you might find like Never Again Rwanda and some other civil society organization or even the government as itself is involved in all this peace work. So when you bring your efforts together, you're able to reach a much wider audience. Mm -hmm. um, maybe uh, just before I hand it over back to Kaze, uh, the other program that we have that's um, also related to peace building, but kind of on a different angle. You see, one of the challenges that peace, um, that could hinder peace is a conflict, one which is also global, which is something we all know. But at the same time, it's trauma. Trauma as a result of what uh, people might have gone through, either through conflict or genocide or any other traumatic experience that may, they might have um, undergone in their lives. So what we do through one of our programs, uh, we, we provide mental health services just to ensure that we provide that holistic package because, you know, it's not only about building people's capacities, but it's also trying to address some of the issues that they currently have. We also kind of link our, um, our um, stakeholders. We try to call, we, we prefer to call them stakeholders because they too have a voice. Mm -hmm. So we link them with, um, let's say various entities like that can be able to provide, is it in terms of microfinancing? At the same time, also kind of like enable them to see what they can do instead of waiting on saying, we're waiting for the government to do this for us. We're waiting for this NGO to do this for us but what can we do within our means? Mm. So yeah, that's basically in a nutshell what we do at Never Again Rwanda, but there is much, much more, but because we are kind of short on time, I won't be able yes. to go into all the details, but I think for now I'll, I'll hand it over back to Kazi. 
Thank you. I just want to tell people if you have a question to Debbie, you can, uh, guys, you can type questions and Debbie can, can be answering uh, slowly. Now, uh, but I, I have another question because this is, a, as we say, this is not like uh, any other Zoom meeting yeah. and what, where we are too serious. We want also to be an inspiring moment where yeah. young people come here and get inspired by other young people. So, I will put uh, the same question I put to Anne. Peace building is not a, <laughs> an expensive field. Yeah. I'm sure you would be paid more if you were somewhere else and with your experience and what. Uh, but you have stayed in, 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 in uh, Never Again Rwanda. You are working with young people. And, and you know, the space of young people, as much as I'm a young person, is very hard. We are very <laughs> hard um, constituency. So yeah. what make you really um, like and love uh, your passion about what you are doing? What make you stay where you are and feel happy and, and keep what you are doing? What yeah. is behind all that? Yeah, thank you, Kaze. Um, that's a very interesting question. So actually, the most interesting part for me is that my background is also similar to Anne, it's not in peace building, but my background is in um, company technology, uh, most recently in development studies and social work. So my passion for peace building came from the fact that, you know, we, 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 I myself personally, I was not born in Rwanda, but I saw how much our parents struggled to be able to regain the country that we had lost and to regain, to ensure that uh, peace prevails for the future generation. So the moment I started doing, because my first professional career was of course in my field um, in counseling psychology, but then I got to realize one can do much, much more rather than not limiting it to only therapy. So that's when I decided to see why not venture into this peace building um, field, especially because it's linked to, um, to counseling and to, to therapy as well. So that's how my passion came about. And then I also got to realize that, you know, um, back then, young people were manipulated into committing crimes against humanity. But today, or even when I first joined, there was a need for us to be able to show that young people are much more than what they did 27 years ago. Mm. And also because I got to realize that at the end of the day, the only way you'll be able to make your voice heard or to ensure that you're part of this whole process is if you're able to, even if it, it might be a very slight contribution, it might be as slight as even in getting involved in, um, because you know, in Rwanda, we have what you call the decentralization process where mm. everything starts from the village level. I think Anne also mentioned this, so it's the similar is the similar case to Rwanda. So for me, I thought instead of just limiting it to therapy, why not also try and see how I can be able to collectively contribute to peace processes, yeah, bring in um, what I uh, the experience that I have, and also be able to learn from other young people. Because at the end of the day, it's not only about me; it's about others as well. So mm -hmm. that's how my passion developed. And and you know, once I started in the field. I never looked back and I think mm. it's something that I'll continue doing um, with with great passion as Kaze mentioned. Yeah. Thank you very much Debbie. Just just to, to conclude and and again I, today I'm I'm asking sorry to the men <laughs> because we have women I have to ask that question. Um, yeah. How is it for you really as as a young woman in in peace mm -hmm. building? What there are maybe some challenges, there may be some privileges or what. So, so what has been your experience as, as on, on the side of being you as Debbie as a woman? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, that's actually a very interesting question. So I don't know if you all know for some of you who are um, on this call, who, if you've read about, you know, Rwanda's process in terms of like empower, women empowerment. Mm. So it's one of the countries that has really like ensured that women, you know, at the, at the front seat because a couple of years back, that wasn't the case. So for me, as, as, as I would say, as a, as, a, as a young woman who is involved in peace work, I haven't faced as many simil as many challenges in terms of like ensuring my voice is heard because already with the current system in place, women are actually being encouraged to take up these leadership positions, to take up, um, to be on the table where peace processes are spoken about, to be on the table where mediation is spoken about, to be on the, to, to actually even be, 
like to be a voice and be able to represent other women who are not be who would not initially be able to be on that position so for me i'm grateful for that but i also don't take it for granted that there are also um very many other young women who have still not found their place or who are still not empowered enough to be able to like let their voices be heard or to be able to know that they too can be able to actively participate in this process. Just before I hand it over back to Kazi, there's one challenge I think that we are still facing as, as women in general, not only young women, but women in general, in terms of cultural constraints, where we, we get to only in some, especially in some societies, where especially if people are even now in a more rural setting where it's always said that the woman's place is maybe in terms of doing domestic work and then you know the men are the ones who are supposed to only be speaking mm -hmm. you can still do both but at the same time it's also important to ensure that women are also because you know if you involve a woman in peace building because of um Anne mentioned this as well our caring you know um mm. empathy and you know that whole element it really blends in well with peace processes. So mm. for that, I really am grateful that I got, you know, to be in a country where women are, and young women, especially youth also, are really encouraged, you know, to be at the forefront um, in terms of representation, in terms of participation, mm. but also in terms of, um, of actively uh, being um, like, uh, I would say like mentors for other young people. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Debbie, for, for all those uh, really nice words of inspiration. I hope many young people here know it's not an expensive field, but it is a changing, a life changing uh, field where you can see that you are doing something not just for you, but for your community, for your country and preventing things which can happen uh, and, and impact on life of people. So my next guest, uh, let me check, Gertrude Asibazuyo. Uh, oh, I hope now I haven't um, uh, murdered your name. Gertrude, are you here? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here and yes. I can hear you very clearly That's and loudly. That's great. I know mm -hmm. Jetrid is a baby and you and I will just ask people to be patient. Uh, this is the, the uh, we are having online meetings, people are home, so it's, it's, it's normal that we can hear background sound. And a voice of baby, I think it's a blessing, we shouldn't feel ashamed <laughs> or for, for that. So yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Jetrid, for your patience. And again, I want you to again, also you tell us about RDP. I am a fan of RDP, people always laugh at me. I always say that I am is one of the organizations in that I find effective, especially in matters of uh, peace. The baby has decided now that <laughs> uh, I'm I'm uh, Jetrid, Can you hear me? Yes, I hope you are hearing. Yes, Sorry, I'm, I'm hearing you. <laughs> Somebody is jealous. <laughs> okay, you know. Yes. So just tell us about really the work of RDP. And especially I want you to focus on, I know you guys had a lot of work, especially during elections, uh, when uh, trying really to, to bring together young people from different um, uh, political parties, different think ways of thinking prevent conflict which could have arise i i really appreciate your work so tell us more about what guys you have been doing at at rdp all right uh, thank you so much kazeneza i'm getrin Basbazio once again from uh Uganda, based in Masindi, one of the towns within Uganda. Uh, RDP Uganda is a youth-focused non-government organization uh, that seeks the holistic empowerment and uh, development of young people living in poverty uh, so that they have uh, more influence in decision-making processes at uh, various levels. <clears throat> and uh, RDP, we have our vision, uh, which is just a just and equitable Ugandan society in which young people count and live a full dignified life. 
And so uh, we have a lot of thematic areas that uh, we work with, just as I've said, uh, we work especially with the youth. But uh, there's another thematic area where we involve all the community and that is under rights, governance and social uh, accountability. Uh, we have an area of youth leadership, inclusion and democracy, uh, where we involve only the youth and we do a lot with the young people in line with the leadership and democracy. And therefore, this is where the peace aspect comes in. You cannot do anything in your life, not leadership, not, uh, you can't be inclus inclusive when there is no peace. Of course, there will be fightings, quarrels, and all that. And so for RDP Uganda, uh, we have been doing a lot of work with the young people in, uh, in Uganda, more especially in the uh, West, uh, Midwestern uh, region of the country. But uh, personally, anyway, I didn't tell you about myself. Personally, I'm a media personnel. I usually have a talk show on uh, a local radio station that covers a population of around 2 million. So uh, I talk to the community. And so since my area of interest is peace, of course, basically, I talk about peace development <clears throat> into our community. Uh, RDP Uganda, uh, we have a lot that we did just as Kazaneza has mentioned during the election because we all have been following <clears throat> sorry we've been following the election processes of Uganda and uh, it was not only within the city that there are conflicts here and there but also in the other uh, up countries there have been a lot of issues right from the primary elections and so how did we intervene how did we uh, intervene to bring up uh, youth so that they participate and of course participate peacefully in the election. Uh, if I am to go right back when my colleague from Rwanda was presenting, someone was asking, is poverty and uh, unemployment related to peace? And was asking her to explain. I think I will answer this right away and say that uh, peace, I mean, where there is poverty, there is conflict, where there is uh, 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 like, fight for a job, there is conflict, there is no peace. So it is true that all these things are related. Uh, they are related to, to peace resolution, I mean to peace. If there is poverty, automatically there comes uh, 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 insecurity, even in families. Because uh, if I'm to hike a little bit during this lockdown, Uganda, I mean my community registering a lot of domestic violence issues. And so what is causing this? A woman is saying man is not providing what he's supposed to provide. And so there is no peace. So my colleague who just asked that question, I would want you to know that peace and poverty are not friends. And so when there is poverty, there is automatically a uh, 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 chaos of a uh, crisis. Okay, uh, RDP Uganda, uh, we uh, mentioned the aspect of the thematic area of leadership and inclusion. Uh, youth leadership, inclusion and democracy as one of our objectives. And this is where we build and train young people during the elections. One, we involve these young people at first, what we trained them to be uh, election observers. We did this in partnership, of course, with other organizations, uh, which were in line with this. And that is Action Aid International Uganda. We partnered with Mirac Uganda. And so, uh, we were training these young people to involve themselves to be the election observers because when you are part, there's a saying that send a thief to catch a thief. Uh, uh, of course, uh, Anne already said that uh, she's always against the aspect that young people are always at the center. They are taken as violent people. So yes, because we still have the energy, <laughs> we have the energy and so we can always do anything. And of course, at times we say we have nothing to lose. So why don't we do this and then become so radical? And therefore we are like, no, let the young people come at the center of observing the election so that they really behave according and also preach the gospel to other outside people. And we did not stop there. We continued involving them into media campaigns where they were, would give them airtimes in, in radio stations. And so they preach 
to the community about their rights to voting, about peaceful election, about how they should behave, how should they, how they should exercise their uh, mandate as uh, given by the constitution to participate in the election. And also we engage these young people and trained them, especially those who showed interest of contesting into a uh, manifesto creation. How do you make uh, 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 your manifesto? And how do you make it a working manifesto so that you, of course, lead the people properly? So we engage these young people, uh, of course, in those other, other lines. It is true, we really made them so, so busy. And uh, I must, I'm very proud and uh, to say that we have over, I think I can't tell the numbers, but we have so many sub-counties uh, within our districts of operation where the young people whom we've been engaged, engaging are leading. We have so many where we now think they are somewhere, they can really bring others. There are so many sub-counties where young people are now the, the sub-county speakers. We have two alumni who are now the, uh, in the parliament of Uganda. So, and these are very peaceful people and people who know uh, what to do at what time, because uh, without, uh, if you don't train, at times it's just a matter of talking to someone and then this person's is, uh, uh, life is uh, saved. And then uh, working to build peace uh, amidst the conflict means you should engage with uh, these people. You should watch and talk about peace and also listen to these people's issues. And this is how you'll always get together. And therefore, how do we engage these young people to always mind and talk? We have always some sessions, just it's unfortunate because of lockdowns and we cannot really have them and uh, because of social distancing, but of course we have initiative of engaging them online. That we always sit around, we sit and then discuss about what should be done. Of course you find the interest of the young people now is in uh, employment. People are saying we are poor, we cannot do this. You cannot volunteer when you're broke, you know? You should have something in the pocket. And so that's when you can keep uh, working. Therefore, we always engage these young people and preach. One, you should have peace at heart. When, you don't, when you're always thinking of a lot of things to do, at the end you lose it. So, uh, as we involve the youth to understand leadership in different aspects, we involve them also to understand that peace has to be key as far as uh, implementing or doing the activities that are concerned. Uh, I, I don't want to cut you, but I want uh, again, uh, first of all, to really congratulate you and, and RDP. Um, one of the things which made me happy it was finding out how many young people you guys have trained and now are in the, in the national parliament and have also gotten other leadership positions in Uganda. I think when people say, why do we do all this, what we do? I think uh, it's, it's, it's a step at a time when we can have one person, two person, two people, three people in, in, in those positions, you know that uh, we are we are trying to create a generation of, of, of peace builders, of people who share with us values and, and principles. But I want to ask you the same question, although you started mm. talking about it, about, for yes. example, what you do personally, you, you talked about uh, the radio show. But again, um, I will ask the same question I asked Debbie and, and Anne. Uh, mm -hmm. I know in RDP you are not <laughs> the richest uh, organization, but what, what motivates you to be in this field as, as a young woman? You can o o also an, a, a, a respond connecting it to the field, but also to your gender. As a young woman, what challenges do you go through? Uh, but also, I, I these days I also have to admit, maybe our gender comes also with some privileges. We can't just exclude that. So what, what do you go through? But also, where does your passion come come from uh, to stay in this uh, area of peace building? Okay, fine, fine. Thank you so much for that beautiful question. Uh, already, I said I'm a media personnel, but uh, I do that as a part time. Uh, I actually volunteer in Media House, but I work with RDP Uganda as a community trainer. And how did I get uh, 
uh, myself into the peace aspect. I think naturally I, I am seen as someone who can always solve issues. I'm not proud, I'm not bragging, but the fact is even when I'm moving on street, I always see people call me and then start telling me their issues. And so it beats me and I'm like, why, 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 why this? I even one day, uh, I was raised by an MP, member of parliament, that is so big for us in Uganda, and was telling me his issues. And so he needed a lot, of, he needed guidance from me. And this is when I realized that I must uh, focus in the line of peace building. I started asking myself, why do these people come to me of all those people? And so I gained that courage. I didn't grow up in an uh, environment where there is conflict, I didn't grow up in an environment that where there are a lot of issues, no, but I just felt uh, uh, maybe there is a call. I need to help the people outside there. And uh, of course, as I usually, I like reading the books about peacekeeping, peacemaking, and so on. I realized that even peacemaking, uh, using and promoting of the, the skills, I mean, you promote the skills. So, and uh, uh, laying these strategies is a gift. You're gifted at times. So we really, uh, that's how I ended up uh, basically uh, working in the line with peace. If someone tells you she listens or he listens my talk show and I don't talk about peace, that person would be saying a lie because it is just naturally in me. And I feel that there are a lot of things lacking, especially in the community where I, I do trainings. Uh, of course, I train about social accountability, but uh, uh, I realize the community needs a lot of uh, uh, people who do therapy, people who preach for them about uh, what they're supposed to do. Because we realize that the, 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 though we are fighting for gender, I mean, we are fighting for women emancipation, we're saying gender equality, we realize that people are at times misquoting and misunderstanding the whole preaching. So this made me go an extra mile to always engage myself into uh, peace work. And honestly, at times I even stay for like three to four months when I'm just doing that work, even unpaid. But I realize people need the word. People need the preaching of peace so that they maintain this. You know, at times we see a uh, conflict in the, in the line of, uh, of war, uh, talk of the Syria, talk of the, the Palestine, talk of, talk of what they are, are really, really, really was. And we forget the conflict within our families. We forget the conflict within our community, even among the friends. And this is where we should start. And so I realized that if I cannot start at my own level, and then we cannot reach there, where we are now advocating and talking about peace at the national level or international anyway. Yeah, so I'm really uh, taken and, and as transpired by my really natural and personal feeling about peace in the community. I, I just want to, 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 to say something about these three women, and, and I think you guys have realized it. There is something beyond um, just the pay, just the enjoyment of the work, but, but they take it as a call. They look what is the needs of their community. They feel what's what what is in, um, important to their heart and i think that's what we are supposed to do as as young people as much as we have to pay bills and and a lot of take care of our families take care of um, uh, a lot of things but there is something we need also to be thinking what is my call in my life as i said this is also a motivational <laughs> um, um, space where we try to e inspire each other so Let's look from, from, from ourselves, from our hearts and listen, what is my call? And start putting our skills, talents, um, gifts uh, um, to our community. It can be to be as, as, as uh, Gertrude, to, to, to host a radio show, to stop in the road and, and engage with the community people you, you live in. It can be engaging to a big scale. But let's do something. Everyone really, I, I guess, uh, if everyone can do something, we can. We can get to what we call, the, what we always say, the Africa we want. Now, I know Franklin has, uh, is going to beat me because we have already taken a lot of time. But uh, I want to give just 30 seconds, 30 seconds to, 
to Gertrude and then uh, by the way I keep calling you Gertrude but I hear you <laughs> Gertrude so Gertrude yes Gertrude so mm -hmm. I'm sorry that's my French um <laughs> giving me hard time with your name so to call you and Debbie just to for 30 seconds to give your closing remarks and then we give back to Franklin and we, we close this session Add. Okay, fine. Okay, you I can go. Think, I think I can I can now be the, the last, I mean the first before Debbie comes yes, in. Yes. And uh, I just would like to take this opportunity to thank whoever is in this platform and of course taking uh, words from us. We are not so special people, but we really are, are very, very uh, <coughs> humbled for this opportunity. And therefore I also call upon everyone to, to, to join the, the United Nations Security Council Resolution 225, which was just in the question. And of course, uh, because they have much emphasis in involvement of the young people, the youth in peace building, let's uh, make these young people join this aspect. Because I was asking myself, God forbid, in case we have a war, uh, breakout in our countries. Do we have a very strong uh, a group of young people who will come up and advocate for peace instead of joining the war? So that is the question we should all ask ourselves. And I say blessed night. Have a nice time. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeltrid. To you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you, Gertrude. Thank you, Kaze. Um, so for me... Thank I'm you, Kaze. Thank you so much. Yeah, so for me, I'll start with maybe uh, uh, by briefly responding to um, two questions, uh, which will also channel into my closing remarks. So first and foremost, when you talk about the role of media, you know, media can be a, a tool of destruction, but at the same time, it can be a tool of um, peace building, a tool of raising awareness, a tool of sensitization, and so on and so forth. So when we talk about the role of media, media can play a vital role, but also we as organizations need to bring them on board mm -hmm. as um, stakeholders, because sometimes we think of media as, a, as an isolated section and we only invite them for our events to cover, but they also need to be aware of these whole processes. So that's how I would respond to that. Um, as I conclude, um, I think most of um, those who spoke before me have continued to emphasize the role of young people. And I still continue, will continue to do that. But for me, I'm looking at it from a different angle. Sometimes we think of peace work as something that um, would maybe require like a lot of resources but it could start as something small. It can start as something as being part of um, your community mediation forum, where you get to work alongside local leaders to be able to address some of the conflicts in the community. It could be something small as each of us, I'm sure have attended very, very many platforms on peace building, on mediation, um, on, 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 on youth engagement. So we can channel those, those skills that we get from these different platforms and be able to share them with our communities, which I think would be one way of ensuring that the knowledge you gain does not only stay on paper, but is channeled into something actionable. The other thing I would like to um, call upon each of us is to ensure that we maximize on some of these networks that we establish because they can go a long way. Um, and we also, because at the end of the day, even though we represent organizations or represent um, different platforms, but at the end of the day, it's also about you as a person. What are you doing? What is your role? What is your contribution? What legacy do you want to leave and what impact would you like to make? And with that, I'd like to thank um, the ULI team for organizing this and for always giving us this platform. Have a good evening and thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Debbie. Uh, Franklin, will you give me 30 seconds to do my publicity? No problem, no problem. <laughs> yes, uh, again, thank you very, very much to Debbie, Jastrid and Anne. Uh, and to you guys, everyone who has been with us uh, all this one hour and something, uh, it was it was great. I, I'm I'm just feeling inspired. Um, again, as I said, uh, my publicity time, uh, as we said, Anne has already introduced. Um, we have started as you lead what we call the East Africa Youth uh, Peace Network. 
we started in uh, May, but we haven't done the official launch. So we will do the official launch in uh, on Tuesday, 29th of June at 3 p.m. East Africa time. I know here we have people from all over the world. You will try to read according to the timing of, of, of your region. We will, you will have a poster soon, although I have already been sharing here the link to register for the event. We welcome you. Uh, the network will be launched officially. We have already few members, but from there, we will now be open to more members. Now, it is called East Africa Youth Peace Network because it is, uh, I can say, a pilot. Yes, we are piloting it uh, from East Africa, but hoping that from next year and the other years coming, we will be open to, to, to other uh, region of Africa, but everyone is welcomed. We will have uh, many people uh, talking about uh, peace, uh, especially the role of young people in peace and security from organization and governments and people who have been working uh, on that. And then we will also present our, our, our work plan. So you can get to hear what we, we are planning to do as, as a network. Our chief guest is, will be Ambassador uh, Fred Ngoga Gateretse. He is um, a, a, the head of early warning at the African uh, Union. So Karibu Sana is an interesting personality too who has been in peace building and impacting really the life of people in many countries he has been working. So Karibu Sana to everyone and to you, Franklin. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kazeneza and the entire guest list. We had Debbie, we had Anne, we had Gertrude and Brian Tumusime is at, I don't know if it's a casino or it's a barber shop. He wants to say hi. I think he wants to say hi to someone in particular. Brian, can you go ahead? Tell us where you're tuning in from and uh, why it's, it's looking like probably it's a disco hall or something. Brian. No, 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 frankly, no, it's not a disco nor a casino. No, it's just a studio. I'm Brian from Uganda, but I'm a Rwandan. I'm very Now Brian's network also. Good to be in this place right now and write my email. I say that yeah, I think you're hearing me right now. You're hearing me. Yeah, I was like, I am, I'm afraid. Is this not a casino or something else? It's just the studio. I am in graphics and other stuff. So I am a youth from Uganda. But I'm a random member being in this. Thank you, Brian. I think, I like to watch yes. thank you, Brian. I think there's also an issue with your network, but we got it. Your Ugandan and Rwandan, a uh, wonderful combination. Uh, thank you also for sharing with us uh, that place. It's a studio, you said? Yes, yes, he said. A studio. Okay, thank you. Allow us to invite Felix. Felix, you cannot leave this call without saying, telling us how. Uh, you and Kazeneza and uh, Debbie found yourselves together. Felix, if you can hear us, we are putting you on the spot. We have one minute to just uh, do a room check. Felix, if you can hear us, tell us where you're tuning in from, and then we call it an evening. Felix, if you can. Felix, keep talking. Uh, uh, hi, C can you allow me to use my audio only? No problem. Okay. No, we want to see you. Yes. <laughs> That's public okay. demand. Uh, so someone may be, you know, this, <laughs> you never know. I know, right? Mm, you might be doing very serious things. <laughs> you might mess up yeah. with uh, a salary. I haven't said anything. It's Kamala speaking. Felix, can you go? Oh, Felix has turned on the video. Hey, strength hey. of a woman. Hey. Oh, uh, hi. Um, good to see you, uh, everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's been nice to hear um, all of you who have been speaking. Uh, thanks to the host for hosting this. Um, yes, uh, as... Uh, 
I call them the sisters uh, because one is from Rwanda, one is from Burundi. So I call them uh, the sisters. Yeah. As they said, um, part of my work, um, I do uh, capacity building for young people, especially young women. Uh, so we did this international forum uh, for young women uh, back in 2019 and another one in 2020. And it is a platform through which uh, we enable intergenerational dialogue. So um, that is how uh, they met. Uh, so I mean, when they're talking alone, I mean, uh, I hope uh, I'm not their mutual enemy. Um, but, uh, but of course, this world is small. They have, I, 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 thought, I, thought my, I told myself they, have, they might have met in other uh, uh, spaces, but I'm sure with all of us here, uh, these, I have realized this uh, field of peace building is very small. So one, when we interact in meetings online or in person, some names are always, uh, some names are always uh, familiar. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, allow us to end by at least recognizing someone. I, uh, I'm going to put them on the spot here if they want to speak. Ivan and also the, the gentleman who has been attentively listening to the program the entire mo uh, evening, uh, apart from Moses Akuma. Mark Italange, if you can just say hi, tell us where you're tuning in from. You have been consistent and we just want to know where you're tuning in. Mark Italian, you can unmute yourself and just say hi. Hi. Mark, we can't hear you. Mark, can you unmute? We can see you, but we can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, Mark, there could be an issue with your audio, right? Uh, okay. Uh, probably you can just drop it on the chat so that we know where hello. you are. And then finally, to wrap it up for us, uh, Ivan, if you want to say something, Ivan, we want to hear your voice. Surely the program can't end without you at least telling us where you're tuning in from. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm not dressed to kill this evening. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I'm calling in from Arusha as well. It was wonderful to listen to all these stories and I always say that um, uh, just a couple of moments ago, I received a notice on um, the Great Lakes region and everything people say about the Great Lakes region is conflict. <clears throat> there are some countries which are considered relatively peaceful, but I also want to suggest that for this uh, purposes of this forum, the silence of guns does not necessarily mean the absence of war. So there is a lot of economic wars going on, social tensions, and of course the war against poverty as well. Uh, <laughs> it's also war. Um, power is distributed across dimensions of political, military, economic. So as long as societies are not equalized, there will be a silent war. And uh, the war that we are fighting now is the war that will uh, confuse the young people. If they do not have enough opportunities, they might be taken advantage of and end up into extreme violent activities, criminal activities, and political uh, sort of advantage, being taken advantage of politically. And um, that is something as a generation we must work against. Um, so well, we will have an occasion on uh, 29th to unveil our youth peace and security agenda for Africa, which Kazenez uh, cleverly said, we will start within the Eastern Africa region and once we have had a comfortable footprint, we will enroll all the 54 African countries 
uh, partner states of the African Union, and it will be called the Youth Peace Agenda Africa. So that's something that um, you can look forward to. I want to also say welcome all the participants of this evening from all across Africa. I believe that almost nearly 50% of Africa is represented today. I saw people from Sierra Leone. Those who are not on this Zoom uh, inside are actually following and commenting on social media. Uh, more than 50% of Africa is represented today. And this is a sign that the ULID East Africa has actually become ULID Africa. And also my colleague, senior colleague, Harold Sungusia is here with us. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, Franklin, over to you. But when I say Africa, we can all say we move it. So Africa, we move it. We move it. Africa. We move it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Ivan is the Yuli program director. Hey, some people are still saying we move it. Eh? <laughs> Franklin, can I say one word? Okay, uh, allow Hamisi to say a word. His hand has been up for a while. So, Hamisi, you want to say hi and say your training info, and then we move the show. Hamisi? You have to unmute yourself. Hamisi, you have to unmute yourself. Frankly, thank you, thank you. Wisdom. Thank you, everyone. It has been a, a great session. And I, I have just learned a lot from the speakers, from Anne Rose, my mentor, to all the other speakers from Rwanda, Uganda. And I, for sure, it has been an, an event that I have learned so many things and uh, because in Kenya we are approaching elections so the youth somehow they'll be at the center of the view whereby the politicians will want to use them so that they get their interests addressed and uh, win elections so peace I think peace starts with the youth because if we have a peaceful society, the youth must be the ones in the forefront mm -hmm. to bring that peace in the society. Thank you very much. It has been a very, very, very interesting moment. And uh, I say, Viva Africa, Viva Youth in Africa. Viva, thank you. Thank Amici. you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we will wind up today by hearing from, you know, it's good to have eminent people just like we had Professor Tufena here. We have a very esteemed friend of you lead called Harold Sungusia. If you Google, I'm sure you'll have over 1000 results coming from that name, Harold Sungusia. Harold, sorry to put you on the spot. Just greet Africa. Say hi. We just want to know where you're tuning in from and uh, just greet us. Sure. Um, well, hi, Moses, and how, hi, everyone. I actually do not want to, to speak. I have been observing and learning, and really, I am very happy that you're discussing this good topic on peace. And my belief is that no justice, no peace. So positive peace, negative peace is actually anchored on justice. So... I have heard from great ladies from Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya. Uh, kudos, I really give you a, a thumbs up. And um, my support is guaranteed. Uh, frankly, you know this, and I'm <laughs> very happy. I'm actually tuned in from Arusha, and my work is to raise funds to support this kind of process. Together we can do it. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much, Harold. Harold uh, is uh, a man with many hearts. So thank you so much for making time. Allow us to end tonight's session by saying that next week, as you've heard, 29th of June is the launch of the East Africa Youth Peace Network and a number of activities will be lined up for that day. But 
eventually, November this year, God willing, inshallah, we will have Yulid Summit, the fifth edition. So allow us to leave you with scenes of what used to happen just before the summit starts. Something called the pajama party. It's usually fun. And hopefully this year with all of us vaccinated, uh, tested for COVID, we are going to be together in one way or another, virtually or in person at Yulid Summit 2021. And that camera will be there. <laughs> thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Benny. Come on, East Africa. Ah. Tell them. <laughs> <laughs>